Welcome, everybody, to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline special episode with Heidi Bryan, who is the co-founder of the Conquer Foundation. Um, I'm so excited to have you here, Heidi, and I appreciate you joining us to answer a few questions about some um, really important resources and um, uh, the perspective of lived experience and how that can play a role in crisis centers and, and really being able to harness um, the, this wisdom and this knowledge that comes from people who have experienced um, thoughts of suicide or attempts or, or whatever the case might be. Um, and uh, so if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are, um, what you do, um, and your experience in, in, in kind of starting some of these things. I started out in suicide prevention for, I've been in suicide prevention for quite a while. Um, I think I started out in 1998, which was about three years after my brother killed himself. Um, and um, which was just a monumental event. I mean, it just to lose someone from suicide is devastating, but it also um, in a way saved my life because I was suicidal myself and I saw the effect suicide had on everybody, including myself. And I realized then that it was no longer an option. Just did trainings and support groups and everything and anything I could. And now I'm, I'm with a new Conquer um, Foundation and group and we're doing um, trainings and presentations, summits, um, all from the um, point of view of people with lived experience and lived expertise. You know, lived experiences is people who've, who've, ha who've been there, who whether it's depression or suicidality or bipolar illness or something, um, who have had that experience, have lived it. Um, the lived expertise are, are the people who um, understand how to talk about it safely, um, and without doing further damage you know there's media guidelines there's way to talk about it and so um you know those are the people who have what what we call lived expertise you know they've been trained and and, and have done it more than once you know um and know how to do it and and are comfortable doing it and love doing it and do well the Journey for Hope and Healing is is a book about from written by attempt survivors to help um, other attempt survivors when they're going through a crisis or when they're feeling suicidal and it's just tips and and you know worksheets and and any way to help them. Um, I would work with people and um, and there just wasn't anything for attempt survivors and I started a support group and um, a young lady came to the support group. And there was her, what I presumed to be her mother, and it was sitting in the lobby of where we had this group. And and um, and you could just feel the anger from this mother. I reached out to the woman. I've never heard back from her. I don't know what happened. But it, it just, right then and there, I knew I had to do something. I had to do something for families, and I had to do something for attempt survivors. Um, so... Initially, I wrote a book, a little booklet for help for families after an attempt survivor. But then I was talking with a volunteer with my organization who is a psychologist. Um, and she was talking about how her patients just ignore the fact that they've just had an, a suicide attempt. They want to ignore it. They, they just, you know, and she's like, well, no, 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 we have to talk about this. Like, this is big, you know. And um, and so we start talking, and I said, "Well, there's nothing for them either." And then we said, "We need a we need a companion booklet. We need a booklet for attempt survivors. You know, we need the, they need to know like they have choices, like like that other people have been there, that they're not alone, um, and and what helps, what can help them." So that was the goal: is, is just to provide some kind of of tool or something to grab onto for other people who are struggling. For anybody watching this who hasn't looked through it, um, it is really comprehensive. And like you mentioned, Heidi, a lot of um, things specifically about this, these are um, things that can help in different um, stages of your recovery. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, recovery is, is not, isn't static it, and it's, it's fluid. So um, I'm, I have a, I have a safety, plan 
And, you know, the safety plan that I had 10 years ago is different from the safety plan that I am now, you know, because I, different things work better. I found other tools. I, like, I now know my triggers when I start to go down that rabbit hole, you know, and how I can prevent myself from, or at least pull myself out while I can before I go all the way down. So, absolutely, there's different stages, and, and you need different tools for that. And that, that aspect that... Um, that that people who attempt and survive or who have you know chronic thoughts of suicide, um, they should know that they're not alone. That was one of the things that struck me when I would do my presentations or even with my groups. Um, like people would just be like, um, "Well, two things struck me. One was it's so good to be able to talk about this freely and not have to worry about being hospitalized or anything. And also that it's so good to know that I'm not alone. Like other people have these same thoughts. How might somebody, would you imagine how might somebody um, answering phone calls from people with lived experience um, who need support at the time might be able to use something like this? I, I mean, I think there's lots of ways that they can take the material from it or they can just refer to it themselves. Um, Whenever I do a training, I always hold it up and, and and provide the link. And, and you know, people are always like, what's that book then again? You know, and, and so I think it's a very useful tool. It's important to really listen to the person, um, not judge them. You know, it, it, it may be that it doesn't seem like a crisis to you, but it's still a crisis for them. Um, and I think just to be empathic and... and and just understand, you know, that the, the amount of pain they're in, that the, the pain that they are in that, that has gotten, you know, that has driven them to this point is often is excruciating. And so what can you do to, to you know, lower the level of the pain and, and help them find reasons for living? I think that's probably one of the best tools we have is, you know, going back to this is what helped me. I don't know if it's going to help you, even if it just opens a dialogue, you know, of how can we help you? It, I think it's good. Who else might be able to use this tool in particular or some other resources around lived experience? Well, I think the family members or, or the people, you know, the support system of the person who is who has attempted suicide could use it too. I mean, I think you can use it as a tool to work together, you know, workbook, let's to open a dis frank and open discussion about, you know, what happened and let's, how can we work together to keep you alive, to keep you from doing th this happening again? Um, let's get that out there. <laughs> you know, let's, maybe we can, should inform people, you know, like this is, this is kind of what's helpful, you know, from people who've been there. So. Yeah, I mean, everybody involved in the in the recovery process can can really benefit from from this, and not just this, but also collaboratively working together, communicating, talking about what the person at risk needs in the moment, and and for for the foreseeable future, whether it's part of the safety plan or um, you know other steps of the recovery. Right? I mean, it's it's vitally important. Right. I mean, it's no different than diabetes. If you had diabetes, you wouldn't be expected to do everything all by yourself and not have the family members know when you were starting to get in trouble or anything like that. It's the same thing. So, yeah, so everybody can benefit from this. This is a, a pretty, and again, going through it, this is a pretty um, versatile tool. Um, this is something that, um, you know, I think you, you mentioned this as well, that like working together with somebody that on this uh, particular um, workbook um, kind of gives everybody a common la language to talk about emotions that somebody might be experiencing and um, the person who is working with them may not be familiar with those emotions but this kind of gives a, a window into some of those issues and some of the things that they might be dealing with. I think that's another thing that can be helpful is to give insight like how did the person get there why are they there it is helpful to get common language and common ground on that having that um companionship when you're going through a hard time just is is vital um it, it just and you can't you can't put you know you can't quantify it you can't 
do anything but but that's but having another human being supporting you is just so powerful and so helpful it, it it's just unbelievable <laughs>